What is up fellow gamers? Let's have a look at the season 14 gameplay preview. Lots of changes here if you want to know they are changing the map, the objectives, the items and some other stuff I suppose. This is not a full list of changes as they said, it's simply more of the new and spicy things. The rest of the changes we are going to be able to see on PB. So anyways, before 14 minutes, you can find these monsters that spawn at 5 minutes. So you are going to see 3 of them being spawned and then they respawn. So a max of 6 can spawn in a game. It says here, maximum of 6 can spawn in a single game, right? If you kill them, you get a permanent buff, which allows you to deal more damage to turrets. If a team ends up capturing all six of them, they are gonna get another buff, which is gonna spawn some of these uh, little white things to also deal extra damage. So essentially, you're getting a permanent buff that also spawns at five minutes like Dragon. So the map objectives are more symmetric and the other side of the map, namely top lane, matters more. And I think overall that's pretty good in the game. I was suggesting for a long while either you make the first dragon spawn at 8 minutes or you make the first herald spawn at 5 minutes. And I also wanted some kind of permanent uh, buff depending on what you get. Now, they could have went a couple different ways. They could have also added some RNG into this. I think it would have been cool. So instead of them getting damage to turrets, you could uh, get a different type of these monsters that would give you, let's say, 1% of uh, your damage, deltas through damage, and you can stack a couple of that. Something uh, you know, a little more combat oriented, or maybe more damage to minions and monsters by a small amount, because that can... Uh, that can sometimes become um, a bit annoying and we had balance problems with that before with the old dragons where if you get a buff that helps you for example clear your jungle faster then you also get more gold more xp you get ahead uh, and some champions can like one shot waves when they are supposed to but yeah that's just uh, an idea I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about these things let's just move forward overall i think it's really good because it makes the other side of the map be more meaningful of course this is just simply gonna be damage to turrets the dragons are still gonna matter more but they have a purpose you know now we also have to know how strong they are how much damage they can deal and tank of course uh, the gold and xp reward because the gold and xp has to be higher than dragon which is like uh, kind of low right because those are more valuable permanent buffs and it's the threat of the soul. Overall, it's very interesting. Anyway, now Rift Herald is gonna spawn at 40 minutes instead. So it's gonna be there for six minutes before Baron spawns at 20. And it's gonna do the same thing, except that you are able to go inside it and kind of use a cyan type ult that deals more damage. And then you are ejected after the impact. Uh, it also hit champions and knock them up. That's pretty much the TLDR. Now, after 20 minutes, the buffs and the crab are going to be void empowered and they are going to give their buff to the whole team that captures it. So you're going to get five players with red buff, five players with blue buff. We'll see if they further adjust this, but of course, even if you lose this buff, uh, <coughs> blue buff and red buff have been nerfed quite a bit. Actually, red buff. Blue buff wasn't that nerfed. I think they actually buffed the scaling of it in terms of abilities. But we'll see. Maybe they uh, further change these buffs to accommodate for these changes in late game. Anyways, you also have a Rift Scuttler that. Massive Scrap Bloom effect revealing all champions and wards in a large area. Also, wards are reduced to 1 HP. I think this is interesting because. The problem with League is that the only thing that truly matters is Dragon. Baron is whatever, I mean that's the closest thing to Dragon, but with the current version of League, 
Sometimes staking Baron, especially in solo queue, is harmful. In pro play, it's a bit different. But in solo queue, a lot of the time, taking Baron, especially early, simply means that your team will start uh, overextending in enemy territory and doing stupid shit because they feel confident because they have the Baron, which doesn't even give many stats that early into the game. If you guys don't know, the Baron buff gives scaling stats, so at around 20 minutes you are getting a very small amount of AD and NAP that doesn't really influence fights, and of course they can still kill you, it doesn't give uh, armor or HP. So it ends up benefiting the team that uh, loses the Baron in some cases. Now of course you might have a biased uh, view of these things because usually the team that gets to take a Baron is the team that is in the lead so they are gonna win anyway, maybe they just stomp, they have better players, better team comp, doesn't matter. Um, but I like that now you basically added three new important objectives in League, neutral objectives, that... Um, well, actually, if you count that there are two red buffs and two blue buffs, you basically added five without adding something new to the game. You made five new objectives. Uh, this crab isn't that important as the buffs for the most part, probably, but it's still gonna be something. Um, and also it comes with a five minutes cooldown, like the dragon. And yes, it's a temporary thing, but uh, imagine your entire team having blue buff or red buff or both. I mean, that's quite impactful. And of course, it's a trade-off, because if uh, you don't contest them, then you're gonna have an entire team with blue buff and red buff for a little while, and another entire team with blue buff and red buff for a little while, depending on uh, their uh, timers. Of course, uh, they are gonna alternate, because it's a 5 minute respawn with uh, 2 minutes buffs, so uh, sometimes you guys are gonna have blue buff and a buff, and sometimes the enemy team is gonna have blue buff and a buff, and that might influence your decision making. Well, will you go for this fight? They all have blue buff and a buff. It might be a little risky, maybe you'll have to consider waiting for the buff to expire in a Baron or Dragon Dance, because then the, if you wait, let's say, 20-30 seconds for the buff to expire, then during the um, team fight for the objective, you are gonna win out. And in some situations, you might be like, oh, I'm not gonna take blue buff and red buff, I'm simply going to make sure that we have enough control over the map to keep them alive so we can synergize the buff with the next baron or the next dragon. That is also gonna be quite important, I think. Uh, so overall, I'm really liking these changes. It's very interesting. They made the early game more interesting, and also the late game more interesting. Baron Nashur. Now it's the star of Baron Pit himself, a Baron Nashur. So TLDR here, we have three Baron types that could spawn. I don't know exactly, I don't think they have specified how it happens. Um, is it once per game? Can a type spawn? I suppose it alternates depending um, on uh, you know the future Baron response. So if you kill the first Baron, the second one is gonna have a different type. I don't know, but for now we have three types. And here you can see this is the pit. Looks a bit different. This is very similar to the actual one on live and this is also a little bit different it has a thing here but it's not just the terrain the barons also have a couple different abilities now they want to simply make baron a bit more fun and not so repetitive and I think this is a pretty good way to achieve it, because dragons are somewhat fun in a way, because it's some RNG involved. And, uh, you know, here it's not so heavy RNG, like it's still just better and it's gonna give you the same buff and it's probably gonna deal 
and tank the same amount of damage. Now it depends a bit on these abilities, how hard they are to uh, avoid and so on. But overall, it's probably going to be the exact same DPS and you know HP bar, depending on the type. <sighs> but yeah, in my opinion. I think these changes are amazing for Baron, it just makes it more diverse. It's just more fun in League of Legends, we need some content. This is great, I'm, I'm liking the Baron change. I, mean, I don't think anyone minds this, it's easy to learn, it's not like 7 Baron types, it's just 3. You're gonna get used to it after 3-4 games maximum. <laughs> as long as you don't have F15 and then you can see the Baron, right guys? Terrain changes for top lane. Now, looking at this, I'm not sure. I hope they removed the thingy where if the minions cross while you are going on crags, they can see you. I think that is just such an old and annoying mechanic that you have to wait sometimes pretty long time yeah, like no one has time for that. It's just really, really annoying, and I hope that is removed. Now, for this change, it means that there's less angles for uh, junglers to gank top lane. But on the flip side, you can't really do the juke where you run around this uh, rock. So that is not the worst, like it's gonna add an extra benefit. Overall this is fine because um, jungle supports and also melee and roms just have way too much room to influence lanes and it's just a bit annoying, you should be able to defend yourself a bit better. Uh, against these things and I'm not saying the game should be like turbo passive or whatever but now you simply have a bit more freedom in your lane and we'll see what happens with the game overall with the jungle role like how are they gonna balance jungle are they gonna make any more changes to the jungle are they gonna leave it pretty much the same as it is on live we'll see I assume they aren't gonna change much maybe they might give junglers some more golden XP because right now it's quite low and since you also have less gank opportunities then what's the point of playing jungle role, right? Uh, you want to at least kill the monsters effectively or maybe they reduce the uh, respawn timers so it's a bit of uh, both worlds there. Anyway. Now in the jungle, if you think about this change, which of course is gonna be mirrored on the blue side you are a bit more covered and your team can set up a bit better vision when it comes to invades now this is gonna change how objectives are played out a little bit as well they kind of made this uh, corridor slightly narrower i think if you think about uh, certain ults or whatever although i'm not sure maybe it just seems like that either way this change is quite neutral but it's gonna help junglers for sure Now in bot lane, I think this one is a bit weird. Like sure, they simply made it sort of symmetric. So one jungler can go through here and on the other side, the jungler can go through here. I suppose it's not that big of a deal. It's simply the same path to gank bot lane. But why did they keep it like that in top lane? Now I'm a little confused. Hmm. 
They are right when it comes to this, like eliminating any side based advantages when it comes to gang protection and wording. Because uh, now both sides are similar. But I guess in top lane as well with the change they end up ended up making. So I don't know what to say really. This is interesting. But yeah, you have to go into the turret unless you play a champion that can you know dash over the wall, a lot of junglers, hacker and E stuff like that. You might think one tower shot. But again, you can still do that on live. Like you can do this pet on live, and it's very easy to simply word this now. You can wear this brush as well, and that's going to cover you for the most part. And if you are scared of, uh, you know, millionaires coming through the, uh, the north side, then you can wear this brush. Interesting either way. Something with Infernal, where they made cinders that give you movement speed and AD. I hope this is not too annoying or snowbally. Upon that, champions will drop half of their cinders, which can then be picked up by other enemy LR champions. I suppose it's gonna be something small, like just a small amount of stats. That's gonna make it a fun mini game. I don't think I mind that. It, it could be interesting, we'll see. And they added this fist bump thingy, doesn't matter. Okay, this is a new item Trailblazer that people voted on for the name. Overall, looking at it, it seems quite valuable, like definitely it could be strong. You get movement speed, a pretty decent amount, about 10% 10, 10 movement speed is a 20 plus 5%. If you're looking at it, it's like um, getting tier 1 boots plus the 5%, so that's gonna be like tier 2 boots in total. At maximum stacks, leave a trail. Movement speed by 15% of yours. So, what does that mean? You could have around 400 movement speed at least, or more. Which means that you are going to give your team at least 60 movement speed. Now, this is controllable, as in if you get slowed, I assume you also give your allies less movement speed. So it's going to be pretty small if you get slowed and stuff like that so it might be something you have to consider like if they have a lot of slows maybe this item isn't the best idea um also has a bit of a slow which is nice for example if you play alistar you speed your team up you engage and then you slow the first target after you combo so that it's easier to land your e stun it's definitely not the worst thing Also for uh, movement speed builds or champions that have a lot of movement speed, uh, Rakan Ult for example gives you quite a bit of a mess. That is also gonna scale with this, not too bad overall. Anyway, let's go into item changes. So, supports. This item costs 40 gold, which means that I guess you can buy a Doran's item on a support. I'm not sure that's the best idea to allow supports to start this item and the Doran's item. I'm assuming that you probably aren't allowed to buy a Doran's ring, Doran's blade, etc. when you buy this item. I'm assuming, now, it's Riot Games, here they do some funny stuff sometimes, but I think supports would just be too strong in the early level. I mean, you know me wrong, supports are supposed to be strong early, overall, I mean, that's their purpose, to support. If a support is weak early, hear me out guys, if a support is weak early you just play a champion that is strong early instead like the supports are generally champions that have to be strong early because if they aren't strong early you just pick a champion that is strong early like if all supports suck early you're just gonna play Pantheon bot lane or something like that, right? and then you have more impact that's how League of Legends works and that's how some other games like Dota 2 work, if I believe correctly. Anyway. If you buy this item which gives like almost no stats and the ruby crystal or boots or an Ampton, well, that's completely fine. Boots start on supports could be interesting. Uh, it could definitely change some 
things they can do early. For example, a pipe with boots going mid lane level 2. Stuff like that. That's uh, what I'm seeing here, but that's about it. And of course, uh, laning with boots could sometimes be valuable. And you get your tier 2 boots faster. Though I suppose you want to upgrade these items first. But who knows, maybe it's not needed as a rush. So you could rush tier 2 boots and now have uh, more impact on the map. This is just like a side stone type thingy. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it works. So it's just like life support item. You don't have to buy this. It says item cost, but you don't have to spend 500 gold, right? I think you might have to buy it yourself because otherwise, how are you going to choose between those item upgrades? You might have to buy it yourself. Anyway, then you get to this uh, upgraded items which give these stats kind of low. And at Celestial Opposition, we start to see the effect. So basically, you are getting the same support item. There's only one that you can buy level 1. It upgrades into being able to have words. Sidestone type thingy, whatever. And then you are going to upgrade it into five different items that you can choose with really niche effects. So let's have a look at this. Overall, I think this change is very good because you can make a choice on the run. As in, depending on how the game goes, a lot of the time you'll be able to maybe change your decision a bit. Now, to be fair, these are going to be quite locked in what champion you play with what comps you are going with, right? Or what kind of character you are playing. For example, is it a tank support? Is it a brand, Zyra? So you don't have that much room to choose. But it's nice that, well, as you are progressing into the game, you can still choose which uh, effect you are going to get. And it makes it more unique, because current support items Let's be real, they're really boring, they're just a bunch of stats, they don't know anything interesting. But here you have sort of like a mythic system. This is a mythic item for supports, you can only choose one. Uh, <laughs> well, they removed mythics, but now they added support mythics, so that's kind of interesting. It's a cool system for supports, I can't lie to you. Now let's see, Blessing of the Mountain. So you get... Uh, Crown of the Shattered Queen, basically. This is Crown of the Shattered Queen. And after 2 seconds, you slow nearby enemies. It's a 15 seconds cooldown after leaving combat. This can be really good. Overall, it's pretty big damage reduction. 2 seconds. A decent slow. You have to be aware though, because if the enemy team can easily poke this item, then it's gonna be quite useless. So, unless you play something that can always start fights no matter what, then you should probably not buy this item. Stolt this slay. Yes, for some reason they're <laughs> adding a Santa Claus item in League of Legends. I don't know what's up with Stolt this slay. The name is kinda cool though, I can't lie. Slowing or immobilizing an enemy champion grants you and a nearby ally with the lowest amount of health, 120 as well as health. And 90 movement speed for 4 seconds. 20 seconds cooldown. 90 movement speed for 4 seconds is a lot. Interesting that it's the ally with the lowest amount of health. Does it mean current health? Does it mean the actual current flat health? Or does it mean lowest max health? I assume it simply means lowest percentage HP target. So if the guy is low HP, you give him this buff to help him survive and turn the fight. That, that's how I would see right design it, you know? This is quite interesting, and you can definitely probably use it on many different type of champions 
It could be a tank, it could be an enchanter, it could even be a mage support maybe. Although they have a pretty nice option that we'll check in a second. 90 moment speed for 4 seconds is a lot. That is uh, essentially like 25% moment speed or something. It's quite a lot. A decent amount of HP. We'll have to see how this plays out uh, within the game because you have to think about some very specific situation which are like Yes, this will be valuable compared to the other options. It seems quite niche. Um, maybe if you have an ally that really wants to engage your enemy team and is extra speed, maybe it's really good at playing a certain champion. Because, so, for example, if you are playing your AD carry and the enemy is hacker him and you give him this 90 movement speed, he can try to run away from the hacker him. We'll see. Blood Song. This is a Shin that applies press the attack. Now my only concern with this item is uh, if you apply Expose Weakness for 6 seconds on a target, then you cast Ability and you get the passive again, can you apply it to another target? Of course, you're not gonna be able to apply it to more than like two targets. Like, yeah, around two targets. So uh, that, that's all right. Overall, this is amazing at uh, helping your team kill tanks, especially for some kind of you know Leona type champion. This is just amazing. She has a real cooldown auto attack. You just press Q. You're gonna deal some extra physical damage and increase the damage your uh, teammates deal. You can actually kill the bad guys. Uh, this is gonna excel against tanks. So, if you're playing against Zex, Cyan, or this kind of support, you're just gonna Leona Q the Cyan, just gonna take 12% extra damage. That is a big boost for your team. Dream Maker. Gain a blue dream bubble and a purple dream bubble every 8 seconds. Healing and shielding another ally blows both dream bubbles to them and empowers them for 3 seconds. Blue bubble reduces 140 incoming damage on the next hit. And purple bubble grants 90 bonus magic damage on the next hit. So they are getting a buff for their auto attacks. Or is it just something they get at the same time? Like you get incoming damage reduction and bonus damage on your hit at the same time. This is a bit weird. Wording here. It's, you'll just see how it works. Overall, this is pretty decent for an enchanter. It's simply extra stats. Nothing too crazy. And some champions can uh, make use of it even if they aren't a true enchanter, because it's every 8 seconds. Technically, you can uh, make use of this even if you are Thresh, let's say, if you get low cooldown on Lantern, right? You can use this. I think uh, Thresh Lantern is quite low cooldown nowadays, so maybe not, but I'm just giving you a random example. Of course, like Bard is not an enchanter, he doesn't like heal and shielding items, they are quite terrible, for being an item on Bard, just one of the worst things you can do, usually. But uh, considering the way this works, you can also kind of use that, so... Yeah, overall it's uh, not just completely locked to each other. Then we have dealing ability damage to a champion causes an explosion at their current location. That damages the target and nearby enemies, dealing 50 plus 3 max L magic damage. So it doesn't scale with AP. Scales with some max health. And of course, you probably want to take this on Brand, Zyra, and other stuff like that. Now, the daily mage isn't too crazy, but it's gonna end up. And if you play Brand, you can constantly apply stuff like this with your passive and maybe Leandri. Either way, it's not locked to that kind of champion. If you want it, 
you can take this on Soraka and uh, spam Qs and deal more damage. But of course that's gonna be quite terrible compared to Dream Maker, I suppose. Or even uh, Solstice, Solstice Slay. Yeah, this is probably just gonna be the go-to on every mage support and I don't expect other uh, classes to run it. Now you also have to consider if you are playing something like Pike or Pantheon, what is your best bet here? Solstice Slay looks quite nice for a champion like Pike. Maybe if you play Pantheon support, you could run Celestial Opposition. That's uh, Celestial. Quite uh, lore oriented. Oh my god, man. Guys, <laughs> this is gonna be more than an hour long video. So I'm already 30 minutes in. Well, it's a pretty big uh, list of changes. I want to make sure I give you guys a deeper idea, some proper feedback, not just be like, wow, this is cool. Poggers, bad chest, you know. So, mage items removed. Crown of the Shattered Queen makes sense. It's weird to make it as a legendary item because. Uh, then everyone can buy it after they buy their damage items. Sort of weird. Everfrost, Leeching Leer, Demonic Embrace, Night Harvester, Lunar Tempest, Stopwatch, and the perfect timing run. Jump right, it took you more than 2000 days to remove that really annoying thing that the entire community hates. Stopwatch. It was about time. Malignance. Lost chapter, finish codex. Really nice build pet. This is solid. ATP, 28, 600 mana. The tricky gold cost. Ultimate power. Gain 15 ability haste for your ultimate. Um, right off the bat, this is decent but nothing crazy. Ultimate flames. Whenever you damage an enemy champion to your ultimate, burn the ground beneath them for 3 seconds, dealing 60 plus 6% AP magic damage every second and reducing their magic resistance by. 6 to 12 level scaling for as long as they are on the burning ground. So you deal extra damage, reduce their MR, which amplifies your damage and your teammates damage. And of course, ideally, I assume you want to CC them. So if I think about a champion with CC that cares about their ult cooldown, I'm thinking of any. This is going to be pretty decent on uh, something like any, I suppose. But you have to look at these items as comparisons. These are supposed to be lost chapter items, so you can realistically only choose one. I'm not saying you are limited to one, you could get two if you care about mana. I don't know if they are going to limit you to one lost chapter item, probably not. But they are balanced around the fact that mages need this uh, lost chapter item to function, which is alright. So they do the same approach where essentially these are mythics. The lost chapter items are mythics. And they were in the system before mythics as well, sort of mythics. You had like Luden GLP. <laughs> That's about it. I don't think there was something else. I, <laughs> I don't remember exactly. But yeah, you had Luna and GLP, I think. So now we have Malignance, Caster's Companion, Storm Surge. Oh, this one doesn't give mana. Uh, and probably some other items that give mana. I assume they, you are going to have Luna's Echo. Because these are not all the... Items that are coming back and stuff like that. Leandri Storment, spoiler alert, doesn't have mana anymore. I, I don't think I've seen another item with mana except for Rod of Ages, which is pretty much the same thing as life. Well, for now, you're gonna have these two lost chapter items, I suppose. And probably Ludens Echo, because I've seen it in the new champion's uh, preview. He had Ludan. I assume those are going to be the three 
new lost chapter items in the new system. But maybe I'm gonna have a fourth one. I don't know what exactly right is doing with the items. We'll have to see on uh, the full change list on PB and so on. But yeah, this item is interesting. Like, it clearly has a niche. If you care about your ult, you can sacrifice, I don't know, maybe poke, DPS, burst for ult power. Now, I can't think of too many champions that would want this right away, but maybe Brand could be some sort of example. I mean, Brand really cares about his ult. He's really strong and fights with his ult. Though his cooldown is not too long. Not a lot of champions are popping in my mind right now. Maybe Lissandra. Like I said, any. We'll see. I'm not gonna overthink it. Caster's Companion. So here you gain a comp shot charge every 3 seconds up to a maximum of 6. And then when you damage somebody, you deal a bit of magic damage. And then depending on how many charges you have, you can also deal that damage to surrounding targets. And if the target is isolated and you have the three charges, you're going to deal basically 70 more damage of this uh, 40 plus 8 percent. I'm not sure exactly what niche this uh, fits. It has a bit of burst and decent DPS. This is every three seconds you're getting a charge. So I suppose this is some sort of thing you want on a control mage that wants to DPS. Maybe it's good against tanks. We'll see how the actual numbers end up. Now, if this is if you're for your ult and Ludens is maybe for like burst or poke, we'll see how the item works in the new season. Then this is probably going to be your go-to for some type of Oriana character. Or maybe even a, a Cassiopeia, if you don't want to go for random wages, right? Interesting, anyway. Storm Surge. They are giving phase rush on an item. Well, it's old Storm Razor Surge or whatever it was called. It has AP, Pen and Movement Speed. Overall, these stats are quite nice and it's not very expensive for uh, this kind of item. While giving you some sort of weaker version of Phase Rush. But keep in mind, you have to deal this damage to be valuable. Um, if your champion is low damage or if you're playing against really tanky champions, then you're not going to be able to activate this consistently. That's uh, pretty much common sense, right? And then after two seconds, Storm Surge. After two seconds, Storm Surge try the target with Lightning. But what does that mean? After 2 seconds of you hitting the target? Like you just throw the ability and after 2 seconds Storm Surge strikes the target with lightning. Or you just have a, some kind of range and when an enemy champion is in that circle of range they have to be there for 2 seconds for this lightning to happen. It doesn't explain it very well but it does really solid damage more than a Lich Bane proc. This is gonna scale into a lot of damage. It's quite high burst. If they die to the lightning or before the lightning strikes, it detonates immediately in a large area around them and you gain 30 gold. So you have to work around it. If you have very high burst damage, to be able to kill your target before the two seconds, then you're going to be able to deal really high AOE damage at like a Dragon or Baron teamfight. But, if you use your abilities in a way that you know when the lightning strikes you are going to kill a target with it, that's also gonna detonate it. So it definitely adds some skill to this item and there's also some skill involved in this passive. So I feel like this is gonna be one of the most interesting items in this season definitely very cool design very unique 
And yeah, they are starting to make mage items more unique and not so boring where it's basically Lud and Leandri being kind of the same item with different niches and then whatever, you buy your Ramadan Void and Zonia, that's major itemization right now. I agree, it's quite boring. I can't like, compared to other classes, they have more cool uh, things to do. It would have been interesting if this was a mana item as well, but I don't mind the way they balanced it. And uh, who knows, maybe you can even run some uh, Storm Surge Udyr memes. Uh -huh. New, holding guys, well... Same old, this back into the game. Now, the thing I'm worried about is, isn't 6% a bit too low? Haunting Guys was 9%, if I believe, or 10. I was hoping for this to be at least 7 or 8. 6% seems a little, a little too weak. You don't even get the value. Not only you have to stack it, but you don't even get the value of some flat magic penetration. Whatever. Crypt Bloom. These names are really cool, by the way. Uh, interesting that they came up with them. So, Blighted Jewel Finish Codex. Quite cheap for an AP item. It has, uh, you know, AP, ability haste in a reasonable amounts, like nothing too crazy. 30% magic penetration. I believe Void Stuff is 40 right now live. So, this isn't very different from Void Stuff. Uh, it's quite even with voice stuff because you get ability haste. But it comes with this passive life from death. Whenever you get a takedown on an enemy champion within 3 seconds of damaging them, create a healing nova on their location that heals allies for 50 seconds. The way I see this, I don't know if the stat profile synergizes too well with what the passive does, but this passive is really good at, uh, you know, countering or helping to counter certain champions that really care about maybe getting a reset. So if you play, uh, how do I call it? Just in simple terms, one shot come shot versus one shot come shot. If both teams are made to one shot come shot each other, you basically one shot come shot the first guy and then before they one shot come shot you, you guys get some healing. That's the best way I could explain this item to be fair. It's really interesting. I mean, very niche, very niche. It might be superior to void stuff, but we'll see what the overall numbers of all items are because we don't know Exactly, maybe Void Stuff gets buffed because they buffed some MR items and you actually sacrifice something, maybe. I don't know. Rift Maker. Sporting Guys plus Finish Codex, that's my alert, sorry. So it has okay stats, same as life. Uh, 3k gold is not too expensive. The build pet is. Very, very nice. Maybe Haunting Guys seems a bit weak on paper right now. It could get buffed to, you know, 8% or something. We'll see. Void Corruption for each second in combat with enemy champions. Deal to bonus damage. Max 10. So now you don't have the true damage anymore, which makes sense. Um, the reason it had true damage on it is because it was a mythic. So now since they made it a legendary, they had to remove the true damage. Or this item would be too powerful. For the most part in the system or it would have to be weak in stats and stuff like that so 10 percent damage is uh, quite solid and then at maximum strength gain 10 percent only vamp six if you are a range champion so cassiopeia can't abuse an item like this that's good gain two percent of your bonus health as ability power so demonic passive is going to get moved to this and only vamp is updated with the following, it now only exists on Riftmaker, which you can only trigger on champions. And the only vamp penalty was for... Wait, let me see. It was mostly for minion, minion healing.
So it still reduced effectiveness, even you have, even though you have to stack it on champions. I guess they are ab removing an abuse case where you stack this on a champion and then you heal off the wave while fighting them in lane. Because obviously, if you get the full Omni Vamp and you get like Q E Q on the wave with more or something, I mean, I'm just giving you most random example that's gonna never happen in a real game. Now, yeah, you're gonna get quite a lot of health. I really like this change because the Riftmaker healing was fake. Now you're actually going to heal a decent amount for, um, you know, Mordecai's abilities are AOE, you have Singed, you have Udyr, they can also run this item, those type of champions are gonna actually heal a bit from this item. And that's okay stats, so this is gonna be their new sort of demonic or their new sort of Leandris torment which we can see in a second here if necessary depending on the champion of course now Leandris torment has been reverted back to its old state before the mythic item system it's simply a more you know Fighter, bruiserish item, they remove the demonic embrace, so now you're gonna have Leandri Stormen to replace it. Was the uh, demonic embrace listed here? Yeah, it was. You don't need to have demonic embrace in the game because Leandri Stormen can fill uh, both niches with Riftmaker filling the niche as well. Now, max 6 bonus damage again, I think this is too low. Horizon Focus. Just AP, Ability Haste, quite cheap. For a completed item. Still increase damage. Medial damage with abilities of champions at 700 range or greater. So now they removed the stuff that works with crowd control and they made it fully an artillery item. You have to hit enemies at 700 range or more to get benefit from this item. And when you proc Hypershot, so you are still revealed for 6 seconds, right? But every 30 seconds, when you reveal someone with this uh, Hypershot passive, you also get a blue trinket, basically. I think that is very, very, very strong. Uh, not just vision, but... It's gonna make artillery champions get a lot more information, especially around the Baron. This is quite nice. I'm not saying it's like crazy or pure or something. I'm just saying it's yeah, definitely quite nice. Seeker's Arm Guard, 40 P, 35 armor for 1600 gold. Now looking at this. The stats are almost gold efficient, but this is simply the new stopwatch. They actually lied, they didn't remove stopwatch, now it's Seeker's Armor but this makes a lot more sense. It's a lot more expensive than stopwatch, you're only going to buy it if you go into Zonia. So I think this is nice, so you get a mini Zonia one use, which is still quite expensive. No. Now I'm worried that if you want that kind of item as a mage, now it's a bit expensive if you want that kind of set profile, but I don't mind it because it's not a given. Like, why should a mage be able to buy efficient armor in early game, right? This item makes a lot more sense. It's a bit more expensive and it has something useful. I assume assume that this might be a little suffocating for some assassins in mid lane but we'll see what happens they could make it a bit more expensive uh, you still have to rush lost chapter it's not like you can rush these items you are going to get it at almost 3k gold by which point the assassins could have snowballed you or the game we'll see what happens Shadow Flame, so this is simply execute damage when enemies are below 35% HP, you deal increased damage. 
I don't know why it says critically strike enemies because it could have said you deal 20% increased damage but I guess they wanted to make it cooler while wow, we have the AP crit item guys white offensive stats which I don't mind a lot of these items don't have random HP on them which is I guess what mages wanted they wanted AP pen CDR so all of these mages are gonna be very squishy which means that if they want to be a bit tankier to resist burst they will have to actually buy defensive items and they want to be able to get both a damaging effect and random health that uh, simply makes them hard to burst and good at dwelling i think this is a fair way to balance cosmic drive they added health back to it i really like that because it's supposed to be more of a bruiser item and they also got rid of the bullshit 25% movement speed, I suppose. I don't know exactly how this works because they haven't specified any number. Damaging an enemy champion with an ability grants bonus movement speed. Kill Gemander with Spindish the Codex. That's really amazing build pet for some uh, champions. Like, I could clearly see, um, for example, a Mordekai Ser building this item first because this is a very good build pet for him. He likes Spindish Codex a lot. Kindle Gem and then an Ether Wisp for some movement speed. Uh, yeah, it's solid. I also have to see how much they have changed components because uh, maybe they nerfed Codex, maybe they buffed Etherwisp, you know? We don't know exactly these things. We should expect everything to change and they are making a lot of changes to components as well in this change list. Now, I have to remind you that this video is about changes that uh, are like um uh spicy and new items and stuff like that right there are a lot a lot more changes that aren't here it's been almost an hour guys sorry i lost my train of thought a bit amplifying tone is 400 gold i think that's completely fair the price was a bit weird they also reduced the price of longsword from 400 gold to 350 gold uh, ages ago, but amplifying Tom was left a weird price. I think making it 400 gold is completely justified, except that now people are going to cry after looking at the gold value of the item on wiki is lower, because uh, even though it's the same item with the old gold efficiency compared to the other items, they're going to be like, oh my god, it's really low gold efficiency, how can you build this major item suck? whatever run of ages uh, is a little cheaper i'm not sure how expensive the run of ages was before the mythic item rework it might have been a little cheaper might have been this number overall uh, they also removed the movement speed because it's not a mythic anymore so we are just looking at the old run of ages not a big deal Oh, fine. Assessing items. Remove dust plate and prop. It's fine. This is a storm razor for assassins. I'm not sure in which situations you would use it. On or on which champions. I think a 99% slow for almost a second is very valuable. Or a Z, for example, if he gets on the target with R, auto takes, big slow, easy to land, triple shuriken, and all kinds of memes. We'll see what champions can use this, even if it's not a lot of them, it's still niche and interesting and adds some variety to assassin items, which uh, in League's history they tend to be quite boring and. Uh, you are simply building the highest damage build every game. But this has some uh, interesting utility. Profane Hydra. So this is a Hydra with Lethality that executes you with the active on your low HP. And all. Tiamat and all other Hydra items have their active back. I guess that's what the community wanted and I felt like, fuck it, we're gonna bring it back. It's uh, funnier and cooler to press a button. Which I like because right at weird policy they noticed that lower elo players 
forget to press their buttons while high level players make more use of actives. So in order to <laughs> essentially make it easier for noobs to play the game, they removed actives from the game. That is why some items don't have actives in League anymore. And yes, it's pretty annoying if you play with like five actives, but Bruiser champions have like almost no actives and they still had Gordinker and Strybaker, crazy hamburger. So you're just gonna replace that because uh, you're still gonna have only one button on Bruisers for the most part. I don't think you have actives on Bruisers except for Stride Gore. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, of course, a lot of assassins want uh, Tiamat, for example. Rengar is the easiest example, maybe Talon, mid lane. So this is definitely gonna help them and adds another niche because they don't necessarily want a Ravenous Hydra with lifestyle, all that sort of stuff. To be fair, they are solving a few really annoying issues with the current item system in these changes that I'm seeing here. For example, Hydra doesn't work on abilities anymore. Fullbreaker, we'll see something about it soon. Um, some stuff about mage items that I like. Overall, it's nice. And you'll see here the Brutalizer is back. It's in the build pad here. Tiamat and Brutalizer. And here you have the Brutalizer and Kitchus Shard, of course, because it's an energized item. It's going to be a lot of Kirchus Shard. more variety of assassin items uh, that isn't just something bullshit you know they're making more assassin items so you have uh, more to choose from hubris i don't know exactly how to pronounce this dirk and kofil Warhammer. pretty basic stat profile for an assassin ego when you kill an enemy champion you are get and the statue of yourself Every Draymond player is going to play that for sure. Passive Eminence. When a champion that you have damaged within the last 3 seconds dies, gain 10 plus 1 per statue, attack damage for 60 seconds. So I suppose if you get 10 kills after buying this item, then you are going to gain 20 AD for a minute when you kill a champion. Stuff like that. Uh, at around 15 AD, this item becomes quite interesting, but overall... <laughs> It seems quite bad. It's definitely an ego item. It's definitely the L9 item that uh, you might buy on uh, some assassin. But you know, if it's too weak, they're gonna buff it, and the item itself cannot possibly be broken unless the number is way too high. It has a base value. It's definitely something that can be worked on. Definitely something that you can buy when you are really ahead or when the enemy team is very easy to kill really a lot of squishy champions and you also snowball early. The design itself is quite cool and it also has a thematic. Uh, could have just been random stats and numbers but it tells you when you kill an enemy champion you are granted a statue of yourself. So tips Fedora Riot Games. New opportunity, quite cheap. Uh, AD lethality movement speed. After being out of combat with champions for eight seconds, gain bonus lethality. This lethality lasts for two seconds after doing damage with champions. So this is almost uh, passive on the current server, pretty much. Murder speed. If a champion dies within two seconds of damaging them, gain 150 movement speed. So I understand the issue of this item. It's basically a go in with some MS, go in, get out type of deal. Uh, I could see a lot of champions benefit from this, especially the ones that don't have reliable escapes. For example, if you play Rengar, movement speed is nice stat anyway, you kill the target and then you get a lot of movement speed to reposition yourself because you don't have an actual escape. Nice item. And I also made an ADMS item. I wonder if it's gonna build into only one. Or maybe it's also gonna build into Yomo's Ghost Plate. That would 
makes sense because uh, Yomo's ghost play is gonna stay. There's no way they're gonna remove Yomo. They, it doesn't say they removed it there. So of course, like Yomo has been in the game for like since the game exists, basically. Uh, be a little silly. Brutalizer still has the same old goal cost. AD, ability haste, and lethality. Glowing Moat and Pickaxe. Oh, Glowing Moat is a new component. We'll see later, it gives a 250 gold. I mean, it costs 250 gold, sorry, with 5 ability haste, if I remember correctly. Yeah, not much to say about uh, the Brutalizer. Simply a different Dirk. From what I've seen, Dirk is still in the game, so I don't know if they collide a bit. But it's nice to have uh, more components like that. Serilda's Grudge has a really nice rework. I really, really like how they reworked Serilda's Grudge. They made it assassin specific, they made it synergized with assassins. So now you get armor penetration based on your lethality percentage. And then ability slow enemies below 50%. So you can just, uh, you know, bite on Jays. No lethality items. Well, you get your meeting, but whatever. And then throw an EQ slow a full HP target. Or you can be Ezreal. Again, no lethality. Slow full HP targets 24-7. That is a little bit... A little bit uh, broken and it has nothing to do with assassins. They made it assassin specific, so I like this. It's just something a bit niche. If the target is low HP, you can run it down a bit better. Especially a tank, because you'll have to you know, go through sustained fight, maybe. Tank items removed. Camp tank, Radiant Virtue, Even Shroud, Gargoyle Stoneplate, Edges of the Legion, Life Well Pendant. Now, I don't really understand why they removed Gargoyle's stone plate. Are they trying to say that the new, whatever you will see, Jakcho wants to fill the niche of Gargoyle's stone plate? I'm not exactly sure. Gargoyle's stone plate had a good place in League as a legendary. It's sort of a scaling item for tanks. You know, on AD carries you have Infinity Edge, on uh, Bruisers you have. Uh, I guess Shojin <laughs> or Titanic Hydra or even Sterak that uh, you know are scaling items you know Death Cap on Mages but on tanks you had the uh, Gargoyle we'll see so now we have this new item Hollow Radiance which I've been suggesting for uh, basically a year now I wanted them to make a new item for uh, Tanks with magic resist and bomb is cinder. Because, you know, you could only buy some fire cape out of bomb is cinder. If you are against the magic damage champion, it's a little lame. And now it's also Spectre Skull, which is the best laning item against magic champions. So this is definitely going to be quite solid. 600 life is uh, quite a lot. MR and region. It's just a magic resist software. Nothing else to say. Solid, it has the emolet and also something interesting. Moonburn. Killing an enemy deals some damage in an area around them. Now, this seems quite lame, but it's good for wave clearing. I guess you, if you kill a minion in a random fight, you also deal damage to the champion. I don't know what, if it has a cooldown or something, but it's gonna help you clear the jungle. Now, the thematic is also cool. This is supposed to be the moon item because Sapphire is the sun item. Poggers. I like that direction. It actually makes sense. You have the <laughs> other version, the MR Bami's item is the moon item. That's that's quite cool. I like that. Good job, right? Anyway, Unending Despair, playing League of Legends in Season 13. Or, while in combat with champions every 7 seconds deal magic damage to nearby enemy champions. Healing for percentage of the damage dealt. This is just the current Jack Show passive, deal damage and then you heal after a long period of time. It's every 7, if seven seconds gonna happen, 
so it means that at 14 seconds you become quite dangerous at 21 seconds it's quite disgusting as well but fights usually don't last that long it has ability based armor and hp i'm curious on the numbers this item is going to be really really defined by the numbers at least compared to most items in league of legends because if it doesn't have enough healing and damage then you can just buy a different item uh, the build pet is you know pretty standard quite okay then you have this Panic Rukern, Spectre Skull and Negatron Cloak. That's insane build pet against the uh, Mage Laner. ATMR, 350 health, 100 base region, yeah, pretty solid. After nothing damage from champions for 15 seconds, gain a magic shield for 8% of the maximum health. Now this looks crazy at first, but you can get more value out of other items like Force of Nature or Spirit Vicious, for example. Uh, depending on what champion you play overall it's a galio passive it's really nice the build pet is very good if you are playing maokai top lane against the mage they are pretty much uh, doomed i would say jack showed the protein so they kept this item 50 mr 50 armor 200 health chainless negatron ruby crystal wait did they remove edges of the legion Oh yeah, they did. Hmm, interesting. So Chainless Negatron Ruby Crystal. Having these dual resist items is quite valuable. Sometimes you're like, I want both armor and MR on an item. What am I gonna do? Void Ball Resilience. For each second in champion combat, gain a stack up to a maximum of 5 stacks. At maximum stacks, become empowered, increasing your bonus resist by 25% until end of combat. Almost resist by 25%. Yeah, let's say you have 300 armor. Bonus. Um, that is achievable. You are going to get 75 armor. I suppose this is the new scaling item. That, that's what I was saying earlier. But what are you actually getting for this? 1000 well 1100 gold that you're spending you are getting very small amount of stats i think this item on paper looks a bit underpowered but maybe not you can technically get a lot of stats five seconds isn't that long and you are gonna have this lady so this might be the new scaling item for tanks which is gonna replace gargoyle I think overall it's alright, but they should probably add either a bit more HP, maybe some ability haste. I'm not exactly sure. Deadman's Plate is a bit more expensive. That doesn't mean too much because the system overall is gonna change, so whatever. But it seems like it does the exact same thing in terms of stats, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 40 movement speed, same thing. Your next attack, the sergeant's built up boom speed to deal 40 bonus physical damage. Now, what I don't know, which is very important, is does the item still work like on live? Where if you build one stack, you deal a little bit of extra damage on auto attack. Because on live, damage spread can deal a lot of DPS because it's on hit damage. You move a few pixels between each auto attack and you deal extra damage, even when like standing still clearing a camp you should still move with them and split a little more damage uh, that's what i always do with this item either way now it has slow resist it has a unique passive so i don't know if it stacks with swifties probably not i don't think right once um, people running around with 50% uh, movement speed also the split is not a tank item it's a fighter item it should be listed under fighter items but doesn't give AD, so it's a tank item. Well, it's not. I mean, now I... I mean, it's still not gonna be a tank item. Come on. 
It barely gives uh, tank stats anyway. It was supposed to deal like good DPS if you guys uh, test the DPS of Deadman's Plate Alive, it's quite high. Um, it can even out damage an actual AD item if you don't have uh, some ratios. Force of Nature simply has uh, more stats. Uh, Force of Nature was located that item. And now its niche is movement speed. It has a decent amount of magic resist. I guess this is still gonna be the go-to if you want to have a lot of magic resist. But maybe not, because you have this new item, Kenik Rukern, which is gonna give you a fat shield. So you're probably gonna buy this in general for MR, and if you really care about movement speed in a specific game or on a specific character, you can go Force of Nature. But I think the other one should overall make you tank it, it also has HP regen. And the MR difference is gonna matter that much, unless you stack this really quickly. Uh, we'll see. Build pet is uh, the same, whatever. You have this new component that was building in the into brutalizer, if I believe uh, correctly. I wonder what items. Which is another thing that I've thought about for a while. Why don't we have a component that only gives ability haste? Like why not? You can simply build it into the other items. Makes it easier to build. Makes the itemization a bit more interesting. Now to be fair, 250 gold for five ability haste. Is a bit of a scam. It should either give more haste or be cheaper, but I understand the abuse case. Because, yeah, if this item gives too much ability haste, then you can do some really weird stuff where you buy four or five glowing modes and you get really high CDR early. Although that would be a bit silly, I don't know what champion could even do that. Or you could simply have random glowing modes in your inventory, similar to how Singe used to stack Dark Seals. But I guess they could technically make it like 10 ability has 400 gold, that would be making more sense to me. Or 350 gold or something like that. Because uh, the current value of ability haste is about 300 gold per 10 ability haste. Maybe a little more. That's how I would value it, at least, if you look at, uh, like, item gold values and stuff like that. Either way, it's interesting to have in the game. Maybe they're gonna change the numbers. The concept is good. Doncor. Total cost, 2700 gold. Okay, so, heal and shield power, family power, and you gain 18 summoner spell haste. The way I see this item, and especially since it's a little expensive, it seems like a support dead cap. If you are really fed, or if the game is really long, you can save up and buy this item. I mean, it's even mirroring, pun intended, the build pet of dead cap, as in, instead of two large rod, it has two bender glass mirrors. Uh, which I hope they buff, because this item is quite weak. Needs more stats or a unique passive that does something. Echoes of Helia is pretty much the uh, same item overall. Now, Stuff of Flying Water, instead of giving ability haste, it has 10% MS. 10% MS? Uh, kind of a lot, but you know. We also have uh, Shurelia and whatnot. Uh, this is not a big deal. You can play around it. It's not gonna be game breaking. It's nice. Stuff of Flowing Water. Now we get into fighter items. Sundered Sky, and we have Gordinker, Divine Sunderer, Silver Mirror Dawn, Iron Spike Whip removed. I wonder why Silver Mirror Dawn is removed, maybe because it was underbuilt? A QSS Bruiser item was quite strong, I was building Silver Mirror Dawn quite often in recent times, believe it or not, because there are some games where it's really nice to have. Passive Light Shield Strike, the first attack against the champion will critically strike for 150% damage and heals for 110 base AD plus 18% of missing health. 
I'm trying to process this as I read it. What does it mean the first attack against a champion? To me this looks like a Shin item, but it has Tunnel, which I have no idea what it is, and Hammer, not Shin, so you can't reactivate it. Like, does it simply go on cooldown? Like, how does it work? This is weird, and it's missing health, so it's not like you get it once at the start of a fight. That would be really low damage and healing anyway. To me, it looks like a Shin item. I really have to see how it works. Maybe it has a set cooldown. That would make more sense. Let's say it's 3 seconds cooldown, so it's easier to balance compared to Divine Sunderer on live, which some champions can really abuse it, like Jax, because they can spam it reliably, and some other champions can't use it at all, because their cooldowns are long. That would be interesting, but we'll see how this works. If you can only get what it was per fight, it would just be absolute, complete garbage, obviously. But if it's supposed to fill the niche of Sunderer, it's called freaking Sunderer at the Sky, then uh, that would be nice, because an item like that is cool, you constantly heal in combat because you care more about sustaining. You are going to sacrifice the damage from Trinity Force, for example, or other items that have more damage like Black Cleaver in order to get sustain. Your damage is low, but you have sustain. That's, that's cool in the game to have. <clears throat> Yamat has an active again. Revenal Syra doesn't work on abilities anymore. It just works like old Revenant Hydra. Perfectly fine, no big deal here. Titanic Hydra also has the active again, but it doesn't seem to scale with HP anymore. I think that's weird. At least the active should scale with HP. Maybe they forgot to mention it here. And some of these tooltips on this post are quite weird and I'll be honest, I'm used to Riot making mistakes on their uh, patch notes and blog posts and something like that. I guess it happens, maybe don't think it or maybe there's some disconnection of, between teams, who knows. Nitro Hex Edges. Tunneler, again I have no idea what that is, okay Tunneler, uh, AD and Health, that's it. It's kind of a boring item, just AD and Health, no unique passive item. Okay, Tunneler and Noon Quiver. Noon Quiver is a nice component. If it still has uh, all hit damage to monster and stuff like that. Attack damage, attack speed, health. 30 ultimate ability haste. So the item itself doesn't have haste to help your basic spells, but you get ultimate ability haste, and then you get a decent amount of attack speed and quite a lot of movement speed. I can see some champions work with this. Uh, Jax, Nocturne is most obvious example. Maybe Vi. Even stuff like Zin or Necton. But this item is not crazy. It's just nice. 15% movement speed is really, really sticky. Pullbreaker, Tunneler, Nether Shard, Pickaxe. So we have uh, Nether Shard is the AD movement speed item, right? And then you have Tunneler with a pickaxe. The stats on it are quite solid, 3k gold, basic attacks grant a stack, up to a maximum of 5 stacks, taking enemy champion, every muscle on max stacks, consumes all stacks to deal other CP, bonus physical damage, so it's some sort of shin that scales with attack speed instead of cooldowns, and it does a lot to structures. Nearby ally at siege minions and super minions gain resists. So that's it. You have a bit more damage to structures and your minions are stronger. There's no bullshit, you get insane stats. And this item is still a respectable item for uh, team fighting and stuff like that. Yeah, you don't need to split push to make use of this full breaker. I think I like this niche more. Like, it still supports split pushing, but it's not broken when you split push. And on the other hand, it's more useful when you are grouped. It 
doesn't say that you have to be isolated though. So that one is going to be more useful when you are grouped. And yes, it's not a gross amount of resists, but this still helps sieging with your team, or if somebody comes to cover you in a side lane, like your jungler or support to play with you in a 2v2, and then, you know, you win, get the turrets, that's nice. Shybaker also gives you movement speed now. The slow is uh, a bit small. But you can get a lot of movement speed while it's decaying, depending on how many champions you hit. So it encourages you to bite on a champion that hits uh, multiple targets. But obviously it's still gonna do the job on a character like Nocturne. Overall, it has a good niche if you are worried about getting kited on a bruiser or then just disengaging your uh, core ability, then uh, Strybaker is gonna be nice. You still get a 20 movement speed, phage, pickaxe, dagger. With center, recover bow, negatron, cloak, dagger. Attack speed, MR, tenacity. Now, I wanted that for a long time. I was wondering why are there no items with tenacity? Now they added an item with slow resist, that's cool, and another item with tenacity. But seeing with center 20 tenacity, and knowing that they nerf legend tenacity to 20% is worrying that they are also nerfing. Mercury just 20% tenacity probably in this new item system and there's no way the attacks deal 15 magic damage on hit it's probably 15 scaling to 80 like like on the live server by the way otherwise the item would be uh, just beyond garbage for sure it's gonna scale to 8 <laughs> uh, otherwise yeah that just makes no sense to have this item it makes sense also champions that auto tech care about tenacity a bit more than uh, caster type champions or tanks because uh, if you get the seed you're not gonna be able to auto tech while as uh, somebody that is spell based he can get the seed between his spells and doesn't really care as much um i would like to see one or two more items with tenacity though especially since we bring it at 20 percent which means that it's not as uh, breaking as having 30 percent tenacity where if you you're forced to go marks but yeah we'll see how this ends up being for stuff like organa vegar and all those characters might have to hit a slight nerf to the SEC if they nerf literally all the tenacity sources repeatedly you're still gonna need some tenacity here and there but right now it's quite underwhelming even on the runes and mercs is 30 percent so that's still good but if mercury just gets nerfed 20 percent well, that's a bit awkward i assume they will make them cheaper or uh, increase the magic resist or maybe add some new passive on top of the tenacity i don't know speed of shojin is Overall, the same concept as live, same build path. And uh, yeah, your non ultimate spells gain in ability haste. It doesn't tell you the stats, though, but I assume it's something very similar. Spell hits grant stacks up to 3. Your spells deal 3% increase damage for each stack up to 9. Oh! Wow, that, that's quite nice. They really made Shojin. We focused on uh, spell casting and stuff like that. Spell damage. I'll have to see the full profile because the stats aren't here for some reason right now. Phage has movement speed again. And we also have this new item, Steel Sigil, which I guess matches Hex Drinker. Which I agree is nice, but you know, Hex Drinker has a shield. Why doesn't this item have something more unique? doesn't have to be a shield of course just i don't know um something like maybe <laughs> maybe some type of damage or utility or i don't know now i'm getting to marksman items this is the last one they removed rage knife and gale force of course they said that they're going to remove gale force because it's a dash and if you can buy it on any champion at any point with all the other damage items, it's a little annoying. 
I don't think anyone cares that they removed it. So now we have this new item, Terminus. Nothing too crazy here, we got Recoverable, Last Whisper, Dagger. So we're gonna have another Last Whisper item on top of uh, Mortal Reminder, it's probably gonna be uh, an LDR, probably gonna be around the same item uh, as live. Attack supply 30 magic damage on hit. Also, keep in mind it doesn't have crit, so... With how this item looks, it's probably gonna be viable on other characters like Irelia or Jax. Alternate between light and dark on hits each attack. Light's attacks grant armor and MR. And dark attacks grant armor, pen and magic pen. This is a pretty decent amount, 30%. I mean, yeah. But you have to stack it. And it uh, wears off um, relatively quickly. 5 seconds isn't too much. It's like in the middle. Of course, you can instantly think about champions that care about both armor pen and magic pen, like Kogmao, Larus, whatnot. It's probably gonna be a core item. And I suppose that uh, Guinsu will simply be the Phantom on hit and stuff like that. You can combo it. This new item, GA. I don't even know why they listed this. It pretty much does the same thing. The yes, answer still Sigil and no stopwatch. Phantom Dancer. Well. This is also very similar to live version, except that it doesn't have so much movement speed anymore. Amazing. PD gave way too much movement speed for no reason. Well, that's one and a half hours of me talking about these changes, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Let's just recap it a little bit. Everything here is really, really good. The objectives are amazing. This new support item is nice. It actually helps support champions engage then for the support quests again amazing change and adds variety to support items mage items uh, they aren't so boring anymore assassin items pretty much same thing tank items you know it's nice i guess we still have decent diversity they they don't have to do much with these items. Enchanter items are pretty much uh, not changed that much. Fighter items are very similar as well, but again, we haven't seen all the changes. Overall, I'm very happy about everything. It makes sense. In a way, they made the system more diverse and uh, complex, but also simpler and easier to read for newer players, I think. Not exactly sure. Uh, I hope that item diversity is going to be a bit better for uh, all classes. We'll see. I liked the mythic system. I think it had a lot of potential. Maybe Riot simply poorly executed it. Maybe the community simply likes blaming the mythic system for their problems or for like champion issues, uh, game issues, system issues for like objectives and snowballing and stuff like that. But we'll see. It is what it is. This is a freak type of video in terms of the length. But thank you, my friends. See you on PBE with some streams. Much love.